Hi students, my name is Sanana. I welcome you all again to learn the subject of social studies with me. Today we will be doing the 11th unit in geography, Indian natural disasters. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say natural disasters? We imagine situations like earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunami, floods, cyclone, all of this. Nature comes in fury and causes great destruction to property, to life, to animals, to everything. So these situations are natural disasters. In this chapter, we will not just learn what are the various natural disasters that occur in India, we will also learn what are the steps one can take if one is in such a situation. Okay students, now let us look at what all we will be learning in this chapter. First, we will learn the meaning of natural disaster. Next, we will learn about causes, effects and distribution of cyclones, floods, landslides, coastal erosion and earthquakes in India. So, we have cyclone, flood, landslide, coastal erosion and earthquake. Now, let us look at the meaning of natural disaster. Students from one mark, the meaning is very, very important. The natural hazard, what is the meaning of hazard? Hazard means harm, which create widespread destruction. Whenever we think of any natural disaster, we know everything is destroyed, but it is very wide. It is not like only one or two or ten people are facing destruction, but a large area, lots of life is facing destruction. So, the natural hazards which create widespread destruction are known as natural disasters. They can be natural, they can even be man-made. Man-made like a bomb blast, it is a man-made disaster. Natural disasters can be geological hazards such as earthquakes, volcano, tsunami, landslide and avalanches. What is an avalanche? So, let us say you are on top of Mount Everest mountain and uh, you see that the snow is now coming down like a landslide. So, the landslide of a snow where the glaciers are falling is called an avalanche. The weather associated natural disasters are cyclones, droughts, floods and epidemics. What is the meaning of weather associated when it becomes very, very hot or when there is extensive rainfall or when there is very little rainfall? It is all associated with weather. Most natural disasters are infrequent. What is the meaning of infrequent? It is not like, okay, it will come every three months for sure, guarantee. There is nothing like that. It is infrequent. There is no timing for it. It can come at any time and are unpredictable. However, a better knowledge, if we know about them, we could reduce the extent of damage. For example, these days you would have known there are so many flood alerting forecasts that happen. They already give a forecast that okay, there is going to be flood, there is going to be a cyclone. So, what they do? They see to it all the villages are evacuated. They see to it all the people, all animals are moved to a safe location so that they can reduce the damage. India is a vast country and we have various natural disasters like cyclones, floods, landslides, coastal erosion, earthquakes, etc. First, now students, we will learn about cyclones in detail. In a cyclone, what exactly happens? Wind blows in a spiral like this towards the center of low pressure. Students, there is air here, there is air here, there is air here, everywhere there is air. The movement of air is wind. So, Will wind go here, will wind go there? Like can it go anywhere? Can air just go wherever it wants? No, air cannot go anywhere it wants. Air can only go or flow 
from a region of high pressure to low pressure. So, whenever there is a low pressure, all the air around will go, saying yes, we want to go here. So, when there is a low pressure that is created and a lot of air comes from everywhere to this region, a cyclone is formed. It is associated with, with the atmosphere because it is related to air. There are two types, tropical and temperate. Students, you know what is tropical region, you know what is temperate region. So, the cyclones that occur in tropical areas that is between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn are tropical cyclones. Above the tropic, if the cyclone occurs, it is the temperate cyclone. In India, tropical cyclones are very common. Three conditions, students are very, very important if a cyclone has to take place. From examination point of view, it is very, very important. There should be very, very high temperature. The air must be calm. You may be like, ma'am, you just said that cyclone brings destruction. How can the air be calm? It is a requirement. It is not a result. So, students, when there is very high temperature, let us take summer season. Summer season is a season in which the temperature is very high. Do you all see clouds in a summer sky? No, right? You see the sky is clear, the air is calm. So, with high temperature, calm air comes. And the third one is highly saturated air. What is the meaning of highly saturated air? Let us say there is air. It is capable of evaporation. What is the meaning? It can take water in it. But if the air molecule is already filled, filled with water, can it take more water? No. In that stage, it is called highly saturated, where the air cannot help or carry out evaporation. So, three requirements, high temperature, calm air, highly saturated air. Imagine the air is now filled with water, it just wants to remove it. Like let us say you are studying, 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 you study 20 chapters and now you are like enough, now I just want to go give exam, I just want to remove the knowledge that I have consumed inside, something like that. So, these conditions, all of these conditions, high temperature, calm air, highly saturated air result in one thing, very low pressure. The pressure is so low that it is called a depression. Relatively high pressure provides around the low pressure. So, wherever there is this low pressure, around it there is high pressure. So, what happens? Because around it there is high pressure, it will push all the air towards the region of low pressure and the spiral develops. So, the winds, there is high pressure here, there is low pressure here, all the wind is trying to go towards the region of low pressure. So, the wind blows spirally inwards to the center of low pressure causing cyclone. Such conditions are found in tropical zone, especially over the seas. Now, if this spiral spiral moves and comes and hits the land, it brings a lot of heavy rainfall, strong winds that cause a lot of destruction. So, they are very destructive to cause loss of life, property, damage to the buildings, transport and communication system, they disrupt the power supply, destroy crops, vegetation, animals, everything. Where in India do we see tropical cyclone? Where do you think is the sea? in the coastal area. So, this is where there will be tropical cyclones. They develop mostly in the Bay of Bengal. Hence, the eastern coast, the eastern coast of India is more prone to cyclones. What are the states in the eastern coast? We have Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. Only a very few cyclones develop in the Arabian Sea. Tropical cyclones occur mainly in India during the northeast monsoon season. Why during the northeast monsoon season? So, the monsoon winds have come, they have hit the Himalayas, now they are taking a U-turn and coming back. When they are coming back, they have so much moisture, they can carry the moisture from Bay of Bengal. So, it is the ripe season for them to come in cause a cyclone. October and November are known for severe cyclones. 
very few cyclones occur in the month of May and June. What are the preventive measures if you have been affected by a cyclone? It is a natural phenomenon students, we cannot prevent it, but people can pay heed to warnings. Let us say there is a weather forecast that the cyclone is coming, they can evacuate that place and go and stay in a safer area. They should keep in touch with radio, television and various communication lines. Temporary shelters, they can move from their permanent homes and go and stay in the temporary shelters that have been provided by the government so that they can remain safe. They should be, these temporary shelters should be provided during cyclones. Cyclone proof structures can be constructed. There are also structures, buildings, infrastructure that can withstand even if a cyclone comes. Mangrove forests and other deep rooted trees can be grown alongside the coastline to check the impact of cyclonic winds and soil erosion. What are mangrove forest students? We had learned this in the forest chapter. So students you can see the kind of destruction that a cyclone causes and these are the deep roots of mangrove forests. If they are there, they can prevent so much destruction from happening. Such a natural barrier against cyclones, mangrove forests. As we just noticed students, even soil erosion can be prevented by growing mangrove forests. Now we will come to the second natural disaster floods. What is a flood? It refers to inundation of land by river water. Let us say there is too much rainfall or too much of glacial melting and the river comes with a lot of force, lot of water. It causes a lot of destruction. One part of the country or the other has to face floods almost every year. Floods are caused by both natural and man-made factors. You may be like, ma'am, natural we know, there may be heavy rainfall, glacial melting. How can man cause flood? Let us look at it. The natural factors include heavy rainfall, melting of snow, tropical cyclone, cloud burst, blockage of free flow of water and silting river beds, etc. These are all natural causes. The man-made causes are deforestation. There is a river is flowing, excessive water came, there are no roots to hold the water. Soil erodes, the river flows extensively and causes flood. Faulty irrigation and agricultural practices, breaching of barrages and rapid urbanization. In your exam, for two marks, you can expect a question, give the natural and man-made causes for floods. What are the effects? Because of flood, what happens? It causes loss of life and property, damage to crops and vegetation, breakdown. Can you communicate? All the power lines, communication lines lay broken. Dislocation of transport system, soil erosion, look at the kind of destruction students. Flood prone area. So, area where we expect a flood to take place is called a flood prone area. Of course, where there are rivers, around those areas will be the flood prone areas. The Ganga and the Brahmaputra river basins. They cover a part of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal. Students, you already know where these rivers flow. We have done this in the previous chapter. So, even the same states will be for flood because of these rivers. The Sutlej, the Bias, the Ravi and Chinab river basins, they include Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. In the peninsular India, the deltaic areas of the river basins, that is the deltaic regions of Mahanadi, of Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. They include which all states? Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. 
the lower parts of Narmada and Tapi river basins that is Gujarat around the area of Gujarat in the peninsular India floods are occasional it's not so common but in North India where there is the Ganga plain the Brahmaputra plain it is more common in peninsular India floods are rare because it happens only because of sudden rainfall you'll never hear of snow melting and southern India or peninsular India getting any flood how can we take measures to control floods afforestation in the catchment area which helps in the reduction of runoff so when the river is running and running off if something can hold it prevent it from running off it leads to prevention of flood afforestation forests they have those roots trees have the roots to help prevent the flow construction of dams is another solution it can let's say there is a lot of force with which water is coming a dam can give adequate support to prevent the excessive flow construction of dams across rivers and storing of water in reservoirs can reduce the volume of water to provide water for irrigation so there are two benefits you will even get water for irrigation and you can even prevent a flood by building a dam construction of embankments these are embankments for protection against inundation of the inhabited areas and of agricultural land lastly they can forecast floods give a lot of warnings so that people can evacuate and go to shelter homes this will prevent in the loss of life and livestock and property